Good morning, friends. Today on the farm, I am looking for some advice. And uh, behind me is uh, what I consider my burn pile. It'll be the third one for this year. This is 2020. And uh, we're in the month of May, cleaning up from storm damage here in Tennessee. And my thoughts are on a sawmill. Inside this pile behind me, sycamore tree, uh, maple tree, and some other stuff but I'm going to show you some of the other piles that I have and every year uh, I'm getting plenty of firewood and I don't need any more firewood and I'm trying to just get rid of this stuff clean up the farm but uh, stay tuned stay with me and uh, let me show you some potential piles of lumber that I have uh, or could make if I had a sawmill Okay, it's uh, some time ago I had bought this, I guess you could call it antique wood splitter. It was made for a three-point hitch, though I don't put it on a three-point hitch. It runs off of a PTO for the hydraulic. Um, there's one of my firewood piles there, but here are some new candidates. Um, let me think. I think this, I determined this to be a white oak tree. Um, most of it this this is a cherry tree there was some bigger logs uh, that I've got a friend that's got a portable sawmill took it took the bigger stuff to the sawmill uh, over in Woodlawn Tennessee we'll show you what the, the cuts were that, that come off of that but uh, I'm gonna go look at some other stuff we just worked the cows yesterday in the background you can hear them bawling and uh, we separated the calves from the mama cows and so there's that separation anxiety that's going on that uh, we'll have to put up with for the next few days here is the uh, a stump it was a maple tree next to the old farmhouse and I noticed uh, one of the big limbs had come off of it and uh, I hauled it away a couple of years ago, but I, I thought it was rotten. And um, before the wind would take it down, here's what it looks like. So there's some of these trees on the farm are really old. And I believe they're going to go to waste if we don't do something with them. So this is another example of what's going on on the farm. If we go around to the front of the house, uh, another one of the old maple trees. This is a maple covered in ivy. Somebody thought it was a good idea years ago to plant some ivy, and this is what it will do to your trees. I think it's a real bad idea. Stay away from the ivy. They make a mess of everything. But uh, this fall, that tree will be coming down. It's becoming a hazard to the side of the house. And uh, uh, the hardware store Lowe's and bought the wood to, to redo this, so that would have been another candidate for sawmill lumber. Also, uh, this cherry tree is real close, and uh, come this fall, I'm going to cut that cherry tree down and get it out of the way. I don't want it to fall on the, the, the spring house. The uh, spring house has been out of operation for a lot of years. The whole top had fallen in, and uh, finally had the time, no excuses, rebuilt the top, put a new pump in it. You see the water flowing out of it, use the hydraulic concrete mix sealed the concrete blocks back inside so it is now usable there's the electrical at the top running through that pvc pipe the insulated pipe is the water line running to the farm house across the road from the culvert let's see if we can get a video of this what happened is you can see the stumps for the cherry tree and where it actually pulled up roots and the roots because of the limestone rock on this spring bed over the years well it made a mess it fell over and I had to cut it out of my pasture here and that was the bottom half of the log that I'll show you that was uh, well it, it took it to the friend's house to have the board sawed up and uh, let you take a look at what that the cuts look like out of the bigger parts of those trees. 
some of the older trees that are still here look at that huge oak tree um, a lot of those let's go down the lane some more and I'll show you uh, some other things <clears throat> We have a lot of cedar trees and uh, cleaning up. All right, here's, here's a good example. That oak tree, the limb fell in a storm last year. You can see the deadness on the ground. I finally got that cleaned up a, a, a few uh, months ago. And on the uh, next to the log splitter, that is part of the tree there that I'm going to make into firewood. If I don't get a sawmill, it becomes firewood instead of some uh, sawn logs, sawed up logs, however you say that. But uh, the big brush pile, fire pile, whatever you want to call it that I was talking about earlier, I'm going to show you the mess that that come from. There's the sheep, they'll want to talk. And this is the lower barn lot. They're doing a good job cleaning up. There's some more cedar trees, potential customers for a sawmill. Look at the size of that cedar tree. This one's been dead for a lot of years. That is, uh, if you don't know what poison ivy is, there it is. If it has three, leave it be. Sh shiny leaves. If you're like me, I just look at it and it crawls all over me. All right, let's move on. Cleaning up the lower barn lot. This is what we call the lower barn lot. Been working on the fence. Got the fence taken care of on the backside. Sheep and goat wire to keep the sheep in. Got the sheep working on cleaning up browsing everything underneath so next year we can build the fence here but uh, the lower barn lot you can see the pile down there may not be able to get a good video of it but all kinds of stuff laying down inside of that pile and uh, some sawable logs down there as well. So looks like I've got a lot of potential of cleaning up I can do. Here's another huge old oak tree. So a big storm came through just a few months ago. It's the same one, uh, the county surrounding Houston County that tore off roofs and it was like a straight line wind but uh, I'm glad I didn't have my fence done because it collapsed everything right here. Took me a, a week to get it cleaned up. There's some more debris I need to get cleaned up, put on the, the burn pile. But uh, it was a it fell off of this side of the hillside and the fence is still down. But uh, made quite a mess. Well, oh, there it is. So it's this maple tree right here. There's the uh, top out of that maple tree. It's actually busted right there. You could kind of see it was rotted and it had a den. And that big chunk of the tree, there were the dogs were sniffing around it and it was a mama raccoon with her babies inside there I cut that up took it to the back pasture maybe I'll show you the what that this tree and uh, that's back up at the brush pile burn pile where I started at but also noticing when it came down the top come out of that tree it made this mess right here to this cedar tree which could be another good customer so I'm looking at being able to saw a log that's 20 foot long if that's the size that I need at all. So uh, stand by, we'll uh, go look at some other stuff. I guess I had forgot to mention 
This big tree right here, if you don't know what that is, is a beech tree, a beech tree. So uh, what tore up the fence, blocked the road, was this beech tree and the maple tree. And um, <laughs> looking at this huge tree here, this maple tree, I don't know how much longer it'll last before it'll be coming down as well. So a lot of old timber growth here on the farm. Right here, still on the lower barn lot, I believe that to be a tulip poplar tree. Coming up the lane, here is, I've already taken part of this cedar tree out because it was starting to crack and lean across the road, being a hazard for coming up with trailers, campers, whatever uh, my trailers are. But I think it won't be long, the rest of this cedar tree will have to come down as well. There's another one right across the road here. Uh, haul down in the wood line, some old trees. Let's see, that's a big oak tree right there next to, well, that's, they're both oak trees right there. But going up into the upper barn lot, that is the corn crib that Vicki and I resided the boards. We'll go take a look at the boards that come off and what we put on, and that was sawmill lumber that we used for that. Also, I've been re replanting some trees. There's a, a white oak, and if you follow the bank right here, there's a white oak there where you, the white pegs are in another one. So I have replanted trees here on the farm as well. Back here at the pile, uh, there's a beech tree down in there. You can see it's rotted out at one end. That's the top out of that tree. Uh, some beech, some oak. Well, there's another big log right there. Not sure what kind of boards that would make. Coming up to the corn crib, looks like it was built with both poplar and oak, but we pulled the boards off the side and come back with these oak boards. We actually left the end, that very end one, the, the plank, that's an original board on this. Let me back up a little bit. But to put this on, we had to drill it. I greased the screws and drove them in with a uh, drill driver. Over the back of the horses, I did a video, it's on uh, Facebook. The big limb that come out of that maple tree landed on the fence, or the gate. It did land on the fence too, but it sure made a mess of the, the, the gate. But, but that's all that's left of that brush pile that I burned up this year with trees in it. Excuse me, horses. Pardon me. Good boy. This is the wood pile. This is the wood that came off of the corn crib. We still have some of the uh, sawmill boards, the oak boards that we used to redo the side. Uh, let's see. My new fence, a big honey locust tree fell on it. I don't know if the honey locusts are worth fussing with to make logs out of. Right here, the lean-to to the corn crib are the cherry boards. And uh, let's walk around and we'll take a look at those. Yeah, starting to rain here now. Uh, 
here are some poplar boards we got from the sawmill some cedar not good quality cedar but we got some good pieces out of it here are the uh, cherry boards my buddy Ray calmly has got a sawmill and he he saw these up for uh, milled them up however you want to say it for Vicky did a great job just beautiful wood not sure what she's going to do with it left the live edge on she likes her projects I had built this lean-to and uh, the rafters oh I don't recall 16 18 foot long two by four rafters and uh, one of my first building projects here on the farm to extend this out for coverage and uh, the posts are the uh, six by six cedar posts however uh, coming to find out uh, here's one of my bee traps but those carpenter bees they like to eat the cedar trees as well so um, keep that in mind when you get to building on stuff but I've got a lot more stuff to build so I'm thinking that's uh, with with the sawmill it would be handy to have a sawmill to be able to uh, not have to buy lumber to continue my building projects but uh, back here there's the only pine tree on the whole place big old pine tree and um, Vicki wants me to rake up the pine needles for projects around the house back here like I said I don't know if they're worth anything but there's a lot of the, the thorn trees I believe the thorn tree is the same thing as the uh, uh, honey locust but that tree fell down in a windstorm, rotten at the at the stump there. It might be just a good candidate to be put on the burn pile. All right. Years ago, my son Jordan helped me, and and we built this. Used to, you couldn't walk through it. We put up cattle panels and made a hog pen out of here, and cleaned out a lot of trees, brush all of that uh, they did a good job of cleaning up everything so if you're looking for animals to clean up sheep goats hogs do a good job too okay years ago i had this half of the hay barn built and it was made out of uh poplar boards, cedar boards, and then I had the guys come back start adding on to it and they ended up using just treated lumber. And I'm sure that'll make a difference. But uh, yesterday, I did notice, I've got my carpenter bee traps up. I don't know if they've caught anything yet or not, but uh, here is what carpenter bees will do to a cedar post. And then, there you can see they've been eating uh, away at the poplar boards. So trying to control those outfits. Let's see, I, I thought I saw a carpenter bee flying around over here just a second ago. I don't. I don't see it. Up in the rafters are some uh, pine boards. The pine boards, I can see some holes where the carpenter bees have been uh, eating away on those pine boards right there. And uh, anyway, they, uh, the carpenter bees have not been here for that long, but they sure make a mess really quick. But, uh, I guess with the, the rain 
coming down and the bowling calves, I'll, I'll stop this video. But uh, anyway, looking for recommendations. I think I could possibly use a sawmill, clean up here around the farm and uh, save, save some money, but uh, also potentially make some money on cutting up lumber, specialty cuts, and uh, taking it to the local farmer's market. But uh, hit, like, share, comment if you so desire, and uh, just look forward to visiting with you on the next video.